Alright, right. 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 calm down, calm down. Right. Just come in. Go and move. After the heavy rains the night before, we settled down, got up in the morning and started getting our work underway. When we finished off, we started chatting and preparing and getting our vehicles on the road to make sure that everything was in order. We realized very quickly that we needed to set up our nets for the grass, which was becoming quite high. The grass within the first five kilometers had already filled up in the net, which was a bit worrying. We then also realized a bunch of other problems with the water crossings. They were a lot which we didn't realize how many, and we'd only done about six kilometers. We started following the previous chicken lines and realized why they were there. It became quite serious pretty quickly, but we got our act together and we started getting everyone in as a team. So I started working out really, really well, but never did we know how long it would take to get as far as we did. During all of this, I was thinking to myself, wow, we haven't actually seen much wildlife. Maybe it's because of the noise of the engines and the fact that no one's been around on these roads for about two years. And then as I was driving around the S bend, this happened. Put heli trucks on our left, I'm coming through. Elephants. Oh, oh, oh. Elephants in front of us, elephants in front of us. Don't move. Calm down. Calm down. Just don't move. Don't move. My main concern was the convoy coming up behind me. I didn't want the matriarch to think that we were still moving and charge even further. A warning shot is perfectly fine. A full charge is devastating to a vehicle, especially that's filled with people. Since the convoy had stopped, she realized that there was no threat, waited a few moments, and then turned around and disappeared into the thick brush, and we didn't hear from them again. After that experience, we ended up having endless amounts of water crossings. Water crossing after water crossing and they just didn't stop. We would drive for 100 meters and a water crossing. Drive for another 100 meters and a water crossing. Here you can see Eric trying to fill up the road so that we can carry on going without there being too many stops from the soft sand. But then problems started to come in with one or two of the vehicles. My defender was starting to take strain from all the mud that was being turned up from the vehicles ahead of me. This was starting to eat into my alternator which I didn't realize at the time. But it started to happen. And I was starting to have battery issues and starting and squealing out of my engine. The sun had just gone down. It got to a point where we just couldn't carry on any further under the circumstances. We didn't know what was ahead of us. Carl tried to do one more last water crossing, but it didn't work. So he reversed out of it in time without any problems. Cool, and camera running. So it's been a long day. Um, <laughs> The road going uh, horizontally has been perfectly fine. We turned right and came straight down. We've got about 58 k's left, but we've had so many water crossings. It's just too challenging at the moment. It's taken too much time. We've had to chop certain areas down so we can drive. Um, Carl went through one last one just before dark and he got stuck. So we didn't have time to walk it, which we should have, but under the circumstances, it's a challenge. So we're all going to be sleeping in the eye campus tonight. Uh, we're all going to be sharing the space because uh, we have fresh line tracks and I'd rather be up in the eye camper than I'd be on the ground. So I'm not allowing anyone to sleep on the ground. I'm going to hang out, uh, just put everyone in, in, in the eye campers and keep it simple. First light tomorrow morning, we're going to check our alternators because we're having battery issues on two of us. And um, um, hopefully we'll have a fresh mind and a fresh bunch of energy because at the moment we're all a bit chat it's been a very very long day we've been on the road since nine o'clock and i think it's it's 20 to 8 at night so it's been a long day 
Stay being legends. See you in the morning. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Oh. Done. As the day started, we freshened up, got our teas and coffees, opened the bonnets and just started checking the engines and the batteries. We felt everything was okay, so we packed up and started to head out. Straight over into the first water crossing. It, however, just wasn't meant to be for my defender. The battery had died from the alternator because of the water. It was brutal and hard. We pushed my vehicle out the way so we can carry on. I managed to get hold of the safari companies in the area and they started to head out while the team moved forward. The calls for help were received. Hyena Pan, which is a safari lodge company that falls under natural selection, managed to grab extra batteries and head out to come and find us. There is only one road, so no one could get lost. We climbed out the vehicles, caught up with the guys, had a few provisions and made plans to go forward. I was quite upset because this is not what I wanted for my team. However, it was a great adventure. So I've just asked that they can take the lead and go ahead because they know they're crossing. And we've been going through super quick and smart. So I don't think it's, I'm not saying it's good, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's not as extreme as what we think it is. Don, please but, confirm that you have Cam. Yes, sir, as keeping the line clear, I have Cam with me. It's just, uh, if we punched through like we are now, we would have been a lot further down the line. Um, but because we are overcautious, not knowing the terrain, rightly so, it's yeah. taking us time. I have had some water over Bonnie, but yeah, I need to change my effort. Driving into Hyena Pan was a blessing. It was great that everyone just relaxed and put their feet up for a little bit and sorted their vehicles out. I had a little bit more work to do. I had to check the batteries again. I had to ensure the tires were right, take out the air filter so that I can dry it. After the team had a great relaxing evening, the next day there was no time to waste and they headed off over Third Bridge into Kwai Primary School. This is a very unique part of the world and it was amazing that they could experience it. One just arrived That's and fine. the mother was like, please, please, yeah, bring. please. Okay. Bring. Okay. Okay. We, we, we're going to go to <laughs> Sable, I think, tonight. Little, Little Sable. Sable. Little Sable. Sable. Yeah. So Drive with us. How far? While the vehicles were being cleaned up so that the kids could be screened correctly, Tim and I headed back to Mound to have my vehicle completely checked. Oils changed air filter changed while we waited for the team to meet up with us the following day. Once the team was all back together we gathered and caught up. We then had to say goodbye to Eric as it was his time to leave after a week of absolute chaos and something different in his life that I believe he will never forget. At this point I want to honor Eric and iCamper and thank them for the effort and time that they've put into this project. It's been amazing and supportive and I look forward to many more.